Hello and welcome in this tutorial where I'm going to show you the stride technique for blues piano. Before we start, we really have a lot to do. You better get ready and uh, tell your friends to, you know, find other friends. Um, I want to uh, tell you about the worst invention of colors in the history of color inventions. The color mustard. Uh, not only is it really idiotic to call a color mustard, but on top of that, to even make it look like it's the color of mustard is double idiotic. It's like this here. I really don't like it and I only wear it on my, on my tutorials. Don't laugh at me, get to the piano, man. Hello everybody to my piano tutorial for stride style piano, which was only invented to make your life more miserable as if it wasn't miserable enough. At the same time, they by chance found out it also sounds great. It's some of the important problem uh, in piano playing that is, you know, we have the melody, we have chords and we have a bass. All of this is necessary. And there are different techniques of um, uh, solving these three problems with just two hands. And this is a major solution that of course, uh, not the around 1900, the ragtime or stride pianists, later on found out, but they stole it. Everything is stolen. And uh, of course they know it like, uh, we, we know it already. Like. And bullshit like that. So they just looked and they were simulating also the rather static marching bands. Uh, like it was all very static, like. So bass, duck, 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 duck. And it's a fabulous, it's a fabulous thing. It makes your life miserable for a little while, but it's a fabulous thing because we are quite free then in the right hand and it does sound different to all other blues piano accompaniments, which try to solve the problem here. You know, we're depicting the, the chord. We are solving the chord problem within the left hand down at the bass. You see, here's the chord. So this takes a completely different stance. It has the static bass. And it has a different rhythmic feel and it's great for slow blues and up tempo. So also you slow bluesers, you might want to stay instead of going back to bed and waiting for late night. Mm. Sorry for that, it was my my daily Earl Grey um, shot. Let's have a look. Where's the problem? Let's get first to the basics. <clears throat> we play root chord, root chord. As with all piano accompaniment, um, the chord itself, the company section, should be small, meaning we use um, inversions of chords. We don't always use like the basic position. That sounds bad in music. Parallel movement of voices is no good. So you have to deal with a couple of... Uh, uh, oh, did, did you hear that? It's a sledgehammer. There's a sledgehammer outside and I think he just uh, he was just timing to get started when I start. Idiot. So C7. We need that. Then we take the closest F7, which is this one. You can also say this one, it doesn't matter, decide for one. I won't use um, uh, millimeters to measure and to control you. Um, so the nearest might be this one or this one. Then we will use the, uh, ma, 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 ma. of course, A, uh, G7, now we have G7, you can use this one. 
or this one. D side four, it really doesn't matter. Okay, now we say. So we have a little bit of parallel movement, but we don't care, it's just blues, it's not a uh, rock money enough. Now, that's fine. This part is totally fine. You learn these inversions by heart and we go also to the A7 briefly because I'm going to use that later. It's the A7. Again, you see my hand is not moving and we love if only few body parts are moving. Otherwise it would be called physical workout and that, that's what a blues musician does not like. And the D7. C7, F7, G7, A7, D7. Okay, these are the chords we need. Now, what happens? Now comes the big, big question. What happens? You play the C7, and then now you have to play the root. Dub, dub. Until here, mm -hmm, okay. Now you have to go back to the root. What happens now when you go to the root? You, you put your full body, um, your full um, focus on the head. Oh, root, gotta find the root. Heavy task, root found. And you lost the chord. You lost the chord. You lost orientation. You don't know anymore who is friend or foe. And that's the problem about this is the jumping. And here, when you start playing the root, you slowly start to think, Wait, where was I going again? Was it Italy or Australia? Ah, damn, let's, let's look at the ticket. And you forgot the, what it looks like. So, that's the main problem here. This is no problem, and this is no problem. This is the problem. And then, of course, we have the right hand on top. So, what can we do against it? First, <laughs> very important, you see the C7, right? Look at the green, my green keys, my trademark green keys. Look at them. Can you see them? You know which notes they are? Okay, look again. Do you still have them? Ha 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 Gone, right? So, again, C7. Now you know my trick, now you know the game. Okay. You still have them? Can you still see what you're playing? This is your task. You have to, when you, when you take off here, you still, you already know. The split second you're here, um, you're using your brain power here, just maybe half a percent of your brain power. That's maybe as much as you need, as you use anyway during your daily life. This goes to the C and you know, you know what it looks like, it's here. And you learned that before. You learn that really nicely and you know what? You can use it for so many other things, these inversions. So you learn it once. So, because you also have to hit them right, you know? It's, it's like, a, it's like a, um, a crashing plane, but you have to crash it um, just between uh, whatever, the um, playground and the, the Walmart store. You know, it's not anywhere. So you have to go down and be safe in also falling here the right way in which like this. Okay, make sure also, you know, this is really not taking much, that you can do handle this with, a, with, a, uh, with a just a small part of your eye here. You don't need like to f throw everything on here. The rest of your vista of your eyesight is kind of stays here. Yes, we can do that. We can do that. Like even animals can do that. Like if you say, um, if you meet, um, let's say a lion and you're talking to the lion um, from one side, hey lion, he would still know um, if from his, in his, the angle of his right eye, there is something approaching that is stronger than him. What might that be? Mm, a tank, a tank. <laughs> yes, okay, we have, eyesight that controls and has is aware of a lot of stuff it's not just like that and you have to open this horizon a little bit you can also sometimes sit sit back a little bit couple of centimeters because if you play like this and have to find this you won't you see but like this it's easier okay so that's the trick 
root and then you already know here and your eyesight after a little training allows you to be kind of control it's still practice but that's the trick to take the shortcut so now let's go down Moses and but also my chords when we play a chord for um, a certain amount of time let's say a whole bar we have two fourth bars and uh, we have four fourth bar we have a four fourth bar then it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four these were the two uh, bars two bars C now then you can of course stay with the root but it was customary at that time also um, it was that little movement they had it, the bass wasn't moving much it was didn't walk yet it just stayed on the root and they discovered I can also play the fifth from C the fifth is the G so if you stay for a long time you play the fifth down here sometimes it also works up here and you do nice I tell you a little bit later what else I used here that's uh, coming coming up so um, then okay, you have to also have the fifth in mind you can add that later when you practice the whole thing a little bit or you can do This fifth we use a lot um, in piano. It's a very common this fifth bass in country like uh, and in, uh, of course like New Orleans. Now let's discover the next secret of my little um, passage. I was going to first. I was playing like that. and then I was playing like F. And now A D seven. C, uh, G, and then I was using this. Okay, let's lose. Uh, let, let's do the 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 progression. Use something very easy. Let's say you just take the magic triangle from my from my legs. If you don't know what it is. Subscribe and you will get all that learned on my channel. Like, okay, just this. Sounds nice, nice, good, good enough for now. Fine, huh? You can do that. We use the bare paw. I always call the bare paw if you just have to basically put your bare paw on it. That's very creative. Okie dokie. So now we are here. Now we are here again. I do it again. I do it again. Use the fifth or the fifth here. F fifth if you want so. Good, huh? It's 
already quite something. So you have time to focus on the on this bit. Now I use something that I personally find very attractive, and that is listen, look at this. I use off beats. It's a kind of slaps by the bass. It gives an, an additional punch to the rhythm. Two possibilities for that. The octave slap. It's the four and uh, it's the uh, two and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, the other one is. Is the chromatic one and two. Now the chromatic, it goes, it falls right into the target note. Use the fourth finger. And in the mix, sounds better. Now, octave, chromatic. And then without, you don't have to overdo it. Without. You can use also octave if you want to do it a really, um, if the crowd is really loud, if you're playing on a wedding reception and uh, you don't like the, uh, the spouse, you play octaves. Because, uh, then you're just trying to get the show focused on you, which is always great on a wedding get all the attention on the wedding. So, there are those. Now you know almost all of it. Now comes the last little tricky. Now these offbeat slaps were the first kind of candy I had in my pocket for you. Now comes the second kind. Look what I do different now. Don't look right. So, yes, you, you know what, I, what I'm talking about, the voicings. Up to now we use the, um, the just ordinary seven chords and inversions of that. Now some of you know we can express a chord in many ways um, and we also know that if the bass is playing the root we don't have to repeat it. That's what, what all what jazz piano is all about, the jazz voicings. That you don't have to repeat the bass note and you can use um, your, uh, your fifth, uh, five fingers to also play other notes, other intervals on top to make the sound well, maybe a bit more complex. Uh, there's a, it's a bit richer in a way so but it depends you don't you don't have to it depends on the style you want to play and it tend, depends very much on your personal taste but for those who want i will briefly show those possibilities like if we have c you know i played it in the beginning i played it like this or like this now 
we have the th uh, uh, first finger, the thumb, on the root. What if we replace the root, which is already played here, with the, another interval, the nine? Great. So the, the nine is a good addition. You can hear, huh? Sounds nice. Stay here. We don't have. Yeah, we can do this. I won't do it because it's it's moving a bit too much already. I would if I stay here with the C. I wouldn't go here for the F. Like uh, we have C here, uh, three, five, seven, nine voicing. If you are familiar with the voicing descriptions, we go in intervals. Three is, stands for the third major third. Five for the fifth. That's very creative also. And the B flat, uh, the. Um, uh, this stands for the minor seven, the seven, and the nine. So we have the three, five, seven, nine vo voicing, and let's go from there to A. C. So we now have this is the regular voicing, just an ordinary um, inversion, and we can do something to this one here. It's the from C. It's uh, it's on the sixth step. It's the major. Um, uh, it's the seventh chord, the dominant seventh type on on the sixth step, and this can be enriched. Don't go into detail this, but you can just copy and uh, believe me. So here, here, this is almost a jazz voicing, uh, or it is. We have the seven here. Then we have the we use we can use the flat nine here. Here we have the major third, and we have the minor six here. You see, and if we do the following, the follow up, we are here. Okay, A seven, B na flat nine, minor nine, the major third of A, and the minor six of A. Now look at this. We go from here to D seven. Now you know we have A seven now to D seven. Again at the A7, this one with the change six and the change nine. Now we go to D7. Again, we replace the root with the nine. Three, five, seven chord again. And on G, watch this now, we can do. This is clear jazz voicing, but it now, well, um, Blues musicians steal from the jazz musicians, and jazz musicians has, have always stolen. Oh, it's the wrong word, stolen. They have, um, it's, it's, it's the tradition. They have just taken from uh, advice from daddy, if you want, so from historical daddy. So, um, this is now seven, nine, three, six. So we have this beautiful voice leading. Probably even more logical for the ear. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Now A. Now D. And now both is possible. This is a bit more provocative, maybe. You know, it's like the. Um, it's like chewing gum and say fuck off, this one. This is more conservative. Good boy. So if you're a good boy or a, a rebel, you can show here in the G7 chord. So this way we have this beautiful transition from C, A7. You can fit here. The blue scale fits over everything. Don't worry, don't worry. Here you can do... Drone lick. 
fits perfectly, or blues scale. And you do you you start with something simple, maybe just a piece of blues scale like. Again, too complicated. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was my mistake. To like this. And then you do. play this all upbeat you can use it uh, excellent for slow blues like uh, with a little, little bit of pedal you see we have even more time here we don't play uh, us voicing bass voicing but we can play but you learned this you learned this uh, this it will be much easier then it will be like kindergarten here this Okay, so that was it for me for stride piano. But I insist you have one more look at a mustard, color mustard. Now I really spoiled your evening, all right? Okay, subscribe, choose another video, or if you learn something for a change, then uh, donate some money to me. Have a nice week. I hope you're well. Take care, best from Berlin.